Hello and welcome to South Asia Chat, a podcast series brought to you by the Institute of South Asian Studies at the National University of Singapore. I'm Raghav Khatri, research analyst at ISAS, and I will be your host for today's episode. Haryana is set to conduct assembly polls on October 5th. These polls will be the first direct face-off between the Bharatiya Janata Party, the BJP, and the Congress after a rather interesting Lok Sabha election outcome earlier this year. To discuss the nature of the election campaign, the issues, and to look ahead, we have with us Dr. Satendra Kumar. Dr. Kumar is a senior researcher at the Institute of Asian and Oriental Studies at the University of Zurich. He works across the fields of sociology and anthropology of caste, class and agrarian political economy and political anthropology. His research investigates on how marginalized groups understand and engage with the politics of the uh, politics and the state. Welcome Dr. Kumar. Thank you Raghav. Um, this has been a pleasure to be here. Yeah. And uh, I would enjoy this talk. Thank you. Yeah. So I will now ask my first question Dr. Kumar. Uh, In the 2024 general elections, the BJP suffered significant losses in Haryana where the tarry dropped by 50% compared to 2019. Could you identify why this happened and in between the general elections and the assembly elections which are scheduled on the 5th, has the BJP successfully mitigated these problems? So let us uh, uh, begin with a little bit background. Uh, uh, I'll tell a little bit about 2024 general elections, and then we can go to uh, to current assembly elections. So if you look at the 2024 general elections, uh, there are two major protests took place in India, the farmer protest of 2021 and uh, women's wrestler protest of 2023. These both protests had a quite huge impact on these elections, particularly to 2024 general elections and now is ongoing assembly election. If I say uh, that farmer protest of 2020 has already written the script of 2024 general elections and the BJP suffered significant electoral laws, the same thing is going to happen in the assembly elections in Haryana. Why? Let me explain a little bit more and then we can come how they have tried to mitigate or try to improve their performance in this background. BGP three controversial form bills and moreover the way in which the state and federal government treated the farmers' protest angered not only farmers but also people in general. Not only did the BJP government in Haryana use brutal force against the protesting farmers, but it also named them terrorists and anti-nationals. The BJP's high-handedness was unprecedented. The farm bill protest united farmers across caste, class, religion, and gender, which will greatly impact the outcome of the ongoing assembly elections. Though the BJP central government repealed the bills, Farmers remembered the role of the BJP Haryana government, which used brutal force to crush the protests and protesters. Besides, the BJP central government never fulfilled its promises to provide MSP to the farmers. Farmers are still sitting at the Sambhu border between Haryana and Punjab. Second point, which is also important to understand these elections, unemployment has been a burning issue in India. In fact, in 2014, Modi and the BJP were elected to power, promising to provide jobs to youth. In Haryana, youth across caste, particularly those from the farm background, voted for Modi and the BJP, hoping to get jobs. A large section of the youth of agrarian caste, such as Jar, Yadav, and Gujar aspired to join the armed forces, but the Modi government launched the Agnivir scheme in 2022, in which a young person is only employed in the army for for four years in a stead of 20 years. So what has happened? The result is in a stead of creating more jobs, the Modi government cut down opportunities in public sector. 
which directly impact, impacted the youth of Haryana, particularly the sons and daughters of farmers across caste, class, and religion. This also sent, sent out another message that the BJP government is anti-Kisan and anti-Jawan or youth. And third larger point, the BJP and its Prime Minister Modi also ignored the protest in 2023 led by women wrestlers who demanded justice against the sexual harassment and removal of the president of the Wrestling Federation of India. The abandoning of and not listening to women wrestlers hurt the sentiments of people in Haryana across caste, class and gender. In fact, the anger and frustration of women were palpable. Now the question comes, uh, as you've asked, uh, how they have tried to mitigate these, uh, these problems and issues they are, uh, they're facing. Yes, they have done, uh, uh, they have took several steps, such as the BGP changed the chief minister, Manohar Lal Khattar, who earned a very bad name and image due to using brutal forces uh, during the farmers' protests. BJP appointed a new chief minister who comes from a lower OBC, a from Sani community, a lower OBC background, and has been known controversial. This step served two purposes. One, to change the anti-farmers image, and simultaneously, second, try to mobilize known JAT OBCs, which has been the key strategy of the BJP since the 2014 elections in the Haryana state. The BJP calls it 35 Viradris versus 1 Viradri. This has been quite interesting development in, in Haryana politics after 2014. Second, appeasing Jats by giving them tickets in the 2014-2024 Lok Sabha and now in assembly elections. By giving 13 tickets to the Jat candidates, the BJP sends the message that BJP is not anti jat and but simultaneously, it is also interesting. This creates a lot of divisions because uh, lots of the tickets have given where the jats, the Congress has put open jat, jat candidates. So it, it's quite interesting. Uh, third, Modi and senior leaders have been seek, making announcement during their election rallies and sending messages to youth that Agni weeds would get priority in the state and central government jobs. So that's these are the ways in which. Modi, uh, as well as BJP in the state, and seniorly just trying to mitigate all these uh, problems uh, they, uh, they have been facing. Thank you. All right, that was very insightful and very thorough. I was, I was going to ask you about minimum support price and unemployment, uh, but I think you've covered fair enough ground. So we'll move on to like the next question. Uh, you also mentioned, uh, I mean, amongst the key issues was the, I mean, restless protest. And uh, with Vinesh Pogart contesting on a Congress ticket now, how how is the vote of the sporting fraternity and the women poised to play out in this election? This is a, a quite interesting development in, in Haryana. I mean, one thing is very clear. The Jantar Mantra protest made Vinay's forget a star, actually. And many people across the Haryana and country saw her as a fighter of women's rights and safety. And uh, her, uh, so she earned a lot of name and fame, and particularly the way BJP leadership treated the entire protest, because the uh, Prime Minister did not listen or did not give a time to, the, uh, to this uh, wrestler community or women. And they were sympathized uh, by people across, uh, across I would say, Haryana and, 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 and country. Now she has transitioned from uh, being an Olympic wrestler to a political figure seeking justice for her community. So then, in a way, if she comes out very clearly her position. She's just not as a political leader, but as someone who's trying to fight for justice. So what in, in so what what the, what is going on here is that several young female wrestlers in Haryana, especially those rethinking their career path in the wake of accusation of sexual misconduct against the former Wrestling Federation of India chief, are rooting for winners to become the sports minister in the hope 
that it would facilitate their return to the haras because in the background of wrestler protest in 2023 many parents actually uh, try to withdraw uh, their daughters from the wrestling arena and that was quite a kind of a setback for uh, young women or or these girls who wanted to make a career as a wrestler and also uh, is also related with unemployment in the state because becoming a sport person also gradually can give provide a job basically so these basically wrestling arenas or akharas you know for young girls is it have a two goals basically one purpose is just to get a gold medal and earn a big name but also is followed by a government jobs so this is also uh, related unemployment in the state uh, uh, this whole situation so it's a kind of crisscross and overlapping there's not just not merely a problem of uh, sports and women but also it has a uh, over lab as well as uh, interrelated with unemployment and that is why Venus Fogart is getting a huge support not only support but also she has a huge seems a huge responsibility to perform in these elections and there is a hope uh, large women voters and girls will come out in her support already they're supporting but they also convert into votes and in that way, it is changing the dynamics of elections in Haryana. And uh, uh, of course, which is considered a very patriarchal state and very, very patriarchal society. But this, uh, the Fogart is being, you know, projected as a kind of a, a fighter for social justice here or for justice or for, for women's right. That is what the image is being created. And that's the kind of fight seems like on the ground also because a huge people uh, support is coming in her favor. Thank you. I hope I answered that question. Yes, uh, this was very, very insightful. Um, moving on, uh, I think um, when you covered the issues which were there in 2024 and BJP's medication, I mean, there was also the issue of caste, which you which you uh, which you brought up. And uh, I mean, that's very interesting because I mean, a lot of alliances have been shaping up in Haryana. The BJP is going solo after the fallout with the JGP, the Jan Nayak Janta Party. The Congress has allied with uh, the Communist Party of India Marxist on only one seat, while the Indian National Lok Dal is with the BSP and then the JGP is with Chandrasekhar Azad's ASP, uh, Azad Samaj Party. So how do you think the alliances will fare and what are the caste equations at work? Well, if I see, I mean, it's a very interesting political development uh, in Haryana and reflects the role of caste in elections. Excuse me. Uh, the Jat community constitute uh, around 25% of Haryana's population and Dalit community makes uh, per, uh, nearly 20%. And both are crucial in this electoral battle. So look at the now these alliances, the JJP, uh, which is called Jannayak, Janta Party led by Dushyan had made alliance with ASP, Ajad Samaj Party of Chandrika. Both are young persons, uh, but interestingly, one is Jat and another is Jata, come out, uh, come from very different caste background. Uh, so here is a, and the, another alliance is also very interesting. I and Lo, I mean Indian National Lokdal and BSP, Bhujan Samaj Party. These Two, I think one way is a very interesting combination. Both are the largest or, you know, uh, uh, big voters group in Haryana. And both are working to secure support from these caste groups, recognizing their significant influence on the election results. The JJP and ASP alliance is leveraging the JJP's regional strength and ASP appeal among marginalized communities, particularly Dalits and Jata. Uh, under the leadership of MP Chandrasekhar Rajad, who was newly elected in UP Nagina. So this is quite an interesting, uh, I mean, background, uh, I mean, kind of alliance, which uh, uh, 
trying to maximize its as a benefits on these two communities how to bring together regional strength and the marginalized communities can come together so same thing with NLO and BSP alliance here is also i mean they're trying to put against the bjp in the, uh, against the ruling bjp the effectiveness of these alliances in addressing the concern of the i mean how only these alliances will work if they can address the concerns of the Jat and Dalit communities. That, that's a, how it work in the elections. Uh, uh, other, if it's a lip service, it might not work. But, but if you have a larger picture now, beyond this alliance is also, so one, one fact has been very, very, very visible and important that Jat has been historically dominant force in Haryana election until 2014. BJP strategy to mobilize non Jats and non Jat means you know upper caste as well as uh, OBCs and Dalits who were very uh, Dalits were also kind of a uh, uh, suffered uh, during Huda regime. I mean Congress regime, and that worked out very well. Uh, but now gradually. We have seen that, I mean, though in 2014 also Jat youth supported BJP. That was the why thumping majority BJP won across the states and North India and, and center. But we have seen the later development what has happened in the uh, farmers' movement, but oh, and also uh, other issues uh, as I have pointed out before. Now this support has been declining gradually, and Jat has almost shifted toward Congress or in uh, in the 2014 uh, for, uh, 2024 elections towards to India alliance in fact so now uh, uh, this is a, is a significant shift and uh, if you look at the and also there was a time when in law I mean Indian national Lokdal used to be very strong regional party. In fact, BJP um, kind of garner its or snatch the larger voters from from in law in 2019 elections. If we look at that, and so that is, but again now this last five years development in in Haryana changing and uh, I mean this dynamics and it's very interesting how. Uh, that I and LD, along with BSP, trying to capture the lost ground. So the shift was, uh, I mean, this the shift uh, was partly due to the split between the IND and the emergence of offshoot GJP. Basically, JJP harmed IND more than BJP. Now we have to see how the if the JJP with the ASP can gain the ground again. But it seems it's quite complicated because on the other hand, INLD with BSP also trying to assert and try to gain is lost, lost voters. So it may harm BJP, uh, uh, it seems to me, and as well as uh, JJP or, or both of them. It's very difficult to say, but it seems like both parties are trying to gain the best or uh, whatever possible through these alliances. Another significant import, uh, change has been shift bit of other agrarian caste away from from BJP. For instance, Gujar and Yadavs have been quite uh, quite uh, loyal loyal voters to BJP in the last two elections in 2014 and 19. But in 2024, they started shifting toward India Alliance or India Alliance actually or or Congress. That will be, I think, the uh, one major major. Uh, uh, we'll see the major uh, impact on the elections. But if overall, I I would like to say, the Jats and Dalits are are the kind the kingmakers, and Dalits uh, are a crucial vote base in Haryana, and they have also shifted from from BJP, as I told before, pointed out that they have been, uh, they were very very kind of a. a angry or you can say disgruntled with the Congress because of the whole whole functioning of his, uh, you know, caste and the way Huda government work in, uh, 
in in before 2014 elections uh and so they voted bjp and uh, and uh, uh, modi but i think they also uh, losing their charm uh, uh, or they are also losing their interest in the bjp it seems to me and they're shifting to a uh, uh, congress and uh, of course they might go back to maybe bsp or asp also because that's what so what major picture the growing consolidation of votes for of from the late muslim sikh communities against the bjp along with the strategic alliance such as in low bsp and jjp signals a notable shift in political landscape of Haryana. I mean, that's how they are faring to me. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Kumar. That's very, very comprehensive. Um, now we'll move on to our last question. So like in this election, uh, I mean, there have been around 19 BJP and 29 Congress rebel members of legislative assemblies, and they have challenged the party nominees. What are your thoughts on this and how is this going to play out in the elections? Yes, Raghav, uh, I mean, this is a important question. I mean, if we look at the, you see, I mean, despite uh, BJP claims and also is considered a very uh, disciplined party, there is a huge defection and independents are con contesting, you know, I mean, against their own party uh, candidates and as independent. I think that's a major definitely it will split local votes and disrupt the overall political dynamics of the state it seems to me uh and but it's, it's also true that it will cost both parties congress and bjp so if we look at i will give you a few examples and that might help us to get this uh, uh, i mean depth of this uh, you know, uh, defections and, and, and rebellion. So we'll look at the, one of the major contest is going to happen in Kurukshetra where Savitri Jindal is contesting as an independent. She's one of the richest candidate in the state and uh, uh, and she's fighting against the BJP candidate. Uh, and uh, definitely it is going to impact the outcome. Uh, similarly, if you look at the Ambala Kent where Congress uh, candidates, uh, the independents are pitting against the Congress party uh, rebels and so it's, uh, independent and uh, party con candidates are fighting with each other that is going to also uh, kind, kind of harm uh, Congress here and look at the Rivadi that here BJP and Congress both is going to suffer because of the internal rift other districts are Karnal, Faridabad, and Jeend. Uh, may uh, are expected to hit by the internal internal rift and uh, uh, or these independent candidates or who are contesting as independent. So similarly, if we move on more, so there there is a kind of as you have pointed out, numbers is a quite huge numbers and these independents. So uh, who are contesting and challenging the party candidate, it seems to me, I think smaller parties like an independence, if I put no, no name to them, smaller parties and independence uh, uh, can emerge as a kingmaker in Haryana elections, it seems to me, because they, they, they might have a, a, a huge uh, leverage and and power and say after the elections it seems because there, there were several seats are very you know there is I mean small margins one can lose the elections and one can win the election in that way uh, I think what what emerge here that these small parties maybe JJP or ASP or BSP can can play an important role or kingmaker in the uh, post election Haryana politics thank you that was my uh, response to that question. I hope I was able to answer that. Thank you so much, Dr. Kumar, for the wonderful insights. You were listening to South Asia Chat. To learn more about our work, please visit us at isas.nus.edu.sg. You can also get updates from our social media platforms. We're on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter.